What's up, guys? What's going on? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology Daily Devotional, and we are going through the book of Genesis. We are in Joseph. Um, we know the story of Joseph, man, but let's take a deep dive into it to see what it's about. If you haven't read it yet, 37, 21 through 32, 37, 21 through 32. Uh, stop the tape, check it out, see what it has to do. Because if you haven't heard the story, I say we know the story, but not all of us know these stories, man. Not all of us know these narratives. So let's go through this and study it together and see what it has to say and how we can apply it to our lives and, and what we can do uh, to grow from it, to trust in Jesus more. So if you have read it, we're going to jump, jump, jump. We're going to jump right on into it, man. So what is going on in the book? What's going on in the narrative? That's the first question that we ask when we ask these questions while studying the scriptures. Um, the book says this. It says that uh, we were on the part where Joseph is coming to the field. You know, they they look at him and they're like, oh, we about to kill this brother. You know what I'm saying? And so he's arrived. And what's it say? That says they snatch him up and they take his clothes off, man. They strip him of his robe. They strip him of that uh, that uh, beautiful colored coat that their father gave him because of his specialness to him. They took that away and they threw him in the pit. OK, because uh, Reuben had convinced him not to, to 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 murder him outright, but just to throw him in the pit. So they took him, they threw him in the pit and they went to eat. And I guess Reuben took off. He He left, man. His uh, idea was that he was going to save the boy, put him in that pit, save the boy, so that way he could bring him back to his father. But he uh, made it sound like he was. we were just going to throw him in the pit and then let him die of exposure. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what happened. They took Joseph, took the, ro the cloak off of him, the robe off of him, and threw him in the pit and left him to die, left him in the field, left him in the wilderness. And so then they go and they eat. They eat lunch, man. Whew, that's tough, bro. You know, after a day of murder, you go ahead and just eat lunch. But he ain't dead yet because they see a, a band of Ishmaelites come by. And they're like, uh, uh, Judah steps up and he says something. He's like, man, why should we, you know, kill this dude and not gain no money? I mean, we got Joseph. Let's do something where we can get something. Let's do something to get something. And so what they did is they decided to, uh, sell him to these guys as a slave. And so uh, they went back to Joseph, they pulled him out the pit, and they sold him for, I believe it was uh, 20 shekels of silver. And they gave uh, Joseph to the Ishmaelites or to the Midianites. Now, this is a little warrant I want to talk about. You know, it says they gave him to the Ishmaelites, then they gave him to the Midianites, and then he, uh, later on, you're going to see, and then the Ishmaelites sold him. Uh, well, I think it's because Ishmaelites is like the bigger group and Midianites are the uh, the focus group, like the um, the ethnicity of the people. Ishmaelites is like all of that area, while uh, Midianites is the specific people because they see them from far off and they call them Ishmaelites because they recognize that they're coming from this place. But then whenever they see them close up, they actually know who they are. And so that is one of the reasons <clears throat> why they use those terms to specify um, who exactly it was anyway. <clears throat> so after they uh, sold him, as uh, Reuben came back, man, he's looking for Joseph and like, he's gone. You, you took him. Where's he at? So he gets angry and he gets mad or sad or depressed or he comes up with all of these emotions and tears his clothes, man. And then they're like, well, we got to get some done about it. So they go and they slaughter a goat and they take this goat and they dip uh, the, the, uh, they dip the blood of the, the cloak into into that blood and then they send it to their father and then they ask their father they say is is this your son's like examine this cloak we found this is is this your son's uh, um it's funny too because they say this is your son it's not our brother or our family member you know he says is this your son's blood but i, I forgot to mention one thing in the story it's funny because he says uh, uh, funny is an ironic is that um, Reuben says, or not Reuben, I'm sorry, um, Judah says when, like, let's make money off of him. He says, because we shouldn't kill him anyway. Why would that blood, should that blood be on our hands? Why should murdering innocent blood be on our hands? And then he's like, also, he's our flesh and blood, man. He's our family. 
my family, man. So instead of killing him or instead of forgiving him for the things he's done or or loving him despite his faults, let's sell him because he's our family. <laughs> man. It's insane, guys. It is insane. But you see how the mind works, right? You see how the mind works. So what is this saying about God? Well, first off, God's sovereign, because the thing is, is there's a trouble going on. There's going to be a famine in the land. And we know this uh, if you've read the scriptures. If you haven't, I'm, I'm giving you a little spoiler here. I'm sorry, but there's a famine coming. And the one who saves it is uh, is through the hand of Joseph. And that's what those um, dreams were before. Now, because of God's sovereignty in allowing uh, Joseph to be sold, because Reuben was going to come back and get him and take him back to his father so his father would have peace. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen that way. And so God is controlling this situation and moving the situation for a greater good than what we can imagine. So what does this say about man? Well, first off, I think it says that we 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 make plans, but God has the ultimate plans because Reuben was, you know, probably trying to do the right thing. Now, I say probably trying because I'm judging his motives. That's going to be my next uh, thing that says about man. But I, I think that we try and do the right thing and it's the wrong thing. You see, Reuben was trying to save uh, Joseph from that pit to bring him back to his father. But that wasn't the plans of God. The plans of God were for Joseph to make it to Egypt, to rise to power so that way he can save a people. And so sometimes our plans that we make, are, a man's plans are not the best laid plans. Well, also, what is this saying about man is the motives. I said, that's the next thing is we have two motives here going on. We have one for Reuben and one for um, um, Judah. Reuben, is it because he desires to give his father uh, uh, less grief in his life by a son dying after his wife has already died? Is that what Reuben is really trying to do? Or is he trying to get back in his good graces? Because we remember that Reuben had an affair with Bilba, who is Isaac, or Jacob's wife or Jacob's uh, concubine. And in that way, he was trying to usurp power. And it doesn't look like it's been working out for Reuben. And so maybe he's trying to get back into the graces of his father. What is his real motive? And so as man, we have underlining motives. Second with Reuben, Reuben has a motive, or not Reuben, I'm sorry. Second with Judah, Judah's motive. He says, he's our flesh and our blood. He's our brother. Is he really desiring to save his life because of his brother? Or is it really just because of the money? Because that was the first thing he said is that why should we kill this brother when we can make money off of him? And then also, the blood guilt. He's like, I don't want blood guilt on my hands, so I'll just sell him and let someone else take that guilt. Let someone else slay him because surely he will die. And I think that's the idea maybe behind. Um, I don't want to push too far because that's not what the text is saying, but that could be the idea behind what Judah is actually trying to do. Save him some shedding of blood and let someone else do it. So our motives, man, our motives sometimes try and twist our own minds to think this is what we'll do in order to save our own skin. Judah with saving his own skin by not actually murdering when he knows that it's going to happen anyway, or which it doesn't, but, or is it uh, trying to say you're going to help your father out because of his heart when really it's because you want that, um, you want that status or that uh, uh, prestige again. So how can we apply these truths to our lives, the fact that God is sovereign, and then checking our motives? Well, well, first off, just make sure that everything that we do give glory to the God. Everything that we do seeks to bring glory to his name. Everything that we do seeks to honor and glorify God who has saved us. And then secondly, just recognizing that uh our plans, even if they seem like we're trying to glorify God, if they change, if they move, it's because of God. It's it's because God's plans are greater. Sometimes we think that we uh, know what we're doing 
But we got to recognize, man, we got to put it in the hands of the one who does it. So when circumstances come your way where you feel like you're moving towards the goal that you're supposed to accomplish and then something comes and sideswipes it right out the way, man, it might have been for your benefit. Or it might have been for not just your benefit, but the benefit for of those around you. So just step back, take a breath, get a breather, recognize God is in control, and then continue to move forward with your life as you trust him in all things, in all aspects of what you do. Man, I hope this gives you a little better perspective of of our lives in the life of Joseph when we were supposed to be saved from this this um this this um terrible plight that was going to fall upon us we ended up heading headlong into it but in reality being headlong into it we by God's grace get to be partakers of saving others i appreciate you guys for listening and i'll see you in the next one